you talk a little bit um, about your feelings about doing this? I was definitely, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I feel like honored that I was like picked out having been traveling now. You know, it has been important to me to keep figuring out how to express myself. So I, I was excited to come and sort of figure out, especially after watching some videos, I don't know, get to the bottom of why, or like what it is, or like why we choose what we choose, or what that means. But I'm a little nervous, actually. <laughs> Can you talk about what your style says about you? I guess I just want to be seen exactly the way that I want to be seen, if that makes sense. It's a sense of control. I enjoy androgyny. Um, you know, whether that's like growing out armpit hair as being a woman, or having your head shaved on the side. I feel pretty loud, but I don't necessarily feel like I need to be screaming all the time. So I think that's part of the expression of, I don't know, let me out. Like, I'm gonna, I just wanna, I got a lot of energy and like, here's a place I can put it. I had this fight with my parents over and over. Like, this isn't for you. I'm not performing this for you. Their idea of what it means to be, for example, butch or wearing boys clothes might like scare them a little bit because they, they don't understand, they, my mom might say like, oh, you know, that this, you're so pretty, why would you be, I, you know, these words or these terms, these boxes, I think I just want it to not have to be about whether it is masculine or feminine, and that's why the word androgynous feels so good, because it kind of defies that. What about assumptions that other people have about you as a person based on your style? I don't know if you've heard of that, Humans of New York. Years ago, before it had like exploded, I had never heard of it. There was a random like guy that came up to me with a camera in Washington Square Park, and I had headphones on, and I had this haircut, actually. And he was like, can I take a picture of you? And I was like, sure. So I stood in a profile, had the headphones on, and he took it, and he titled the picture, A Girl Named Joe. Forgot all about it. And then I was in rehearsals for a show, and my friend Preston came up to me, and he's like, you know that there's this like photo of you, and that there's this crazy discourse about whether you're trans or not. And I was like, what? And he's like, yeah. And he showed me the photo. And the first comments, and then the next hundred comments were about, whether I, I actually do identify as a girl and how it's unfair to call me a girl named Joe because who knows if that's what I would call myself. Well, she's wearing door knocker earrings, so it's obviously a girl. It's like people were just commenting, ripping apart not just the style, but also like whether the profile, my profile seemed masculine. I think on a regular basis being called sir is one of the main things that can happen to me. I'll say to my friends who I'm with like, oh, they just called me sir. Like it's almost like a, like sometimes it feels like a pimple that you want to tell someone is there first before they notice it. Now I just feel that I'm embracing whatever my body is, which isn't this idyllic version I had of what a woman was. And I'm realizing that that can be exploded open. I'm not getting like catcalled on the street, that's for sure. Do I want to be? No. But it's interesting to notice that like I often don't, I feel like I'm not passing as a woman in the way that you would on a street. I didn't know how to see my own body and I felt like left out of this whole realm of what it means to be a woman. And now I think I can express both and yet not have to have this type of body, whatever that is. What's, what but. would you say is the biggest struggle that you've had in your life that you've turned into a strength? I haven't had many relationships. I would say a really, um, the realization after the end of my first relationship that I lacked a lot of self-worth. I called myself um, asexual, not that I don't believe that that was true for a time, but I, you know, I use those terms and I think that a lot of what I was doing was not facing up to the fact that being intimate was terrifying, feeling like, I don't know, the idea that like being, um, that being abandoned was easier than being partnered in being in a relationship and telling my family about that, being outward with that with my friends and accepting in myself that I had perhaps fallen in love, not perhaps, definitely did. I felt like I was putting a lot on the line, but I left that behind when I fell in love. And then I got, I got severely hurt at the end of that, facing up to the fact that like you have a power within you and that you're not protecting yourself. You actually are not protecting yourself by putting up those walls or saying that very thing out loud a million times as though a mantra, this is gonna happen, this is what's gonna happen. You're not protecting yourself. You cannot protect yourself from what is gonna come and that's actually a really freeing realization. And just following something and not being scared of everything else you're either gonna miss or that by doing this or by saying this that you're being put into this box. You're not, you don't have to protect yourself like that. You can actually, it's so much more protection to go out unarmed and scream out loud what you want and who you are. When do you feel the most vulnerable? In my most intimate relationships. So family, with my girlfriend. 
I think it's one thing to cry um, about like at a you know at a movie or something, but then it's another thing which I feel like fine with with them. But it's another thing like at a funeral or about something that I'm unless it's like a tantrum, which is the one thing I do think I can do with my family that I can't with anybody else. I don't know. I feel weird to be that deeply emotional. They provide you mirrors, and that's just scary to see. It's scary to see what's reflected back with the people that know you that intimately, or that I will be judged by the people that I care the mo you know the, the deepest about, rather than the people out in the world who that doesn't bother me as much. That became an issue and something that we talked about a lot, and that I'm trying to change as we speak because I feel like that's. That is sort of fraudulent in a certain sense. You gotta be held, you have to have people around you who hold you accountable. Being queer wasn't something that I felt that I was like hiding or wanting to be with a woman. It was, it was wanting at all. You know, a lot of people have, have told stories of like thinking that they couldn't be intimate with anyone and then realizing that that was because internally they were gay and that that was what was actually being unexpressed. And I, I still, to this day, I'm still trying to figure out why I never felt like it was about gender at all or even about the queerness, but about being sexual. I had this idea of innocence and still like that that like if I did anything at all that was remotely uh, that was remotely sexual at all I'd be like ruining my innocence. Now maybe innocence was a word for queer and I just didn't know. I don't know. It felt more like it was about not wanting to like be a, like be a part of this idea that like we're just all sexual. We're also lucky again and I, I, I'm not trying to be proselytizing but just with everything that is happening in the world right now we're so lucky to be able to even be thinking like this, to be talking about this. And maybe without even realizing it, or maybe the next step from here is just hoping that I'm expressing myself based on knowing that I have the ability to express myself or that we can even have this conversation. When do you feel the most beautiful? I think it's when I found the perfectly right alchemy of expression on stage. The confidence that that can help engender is, is I guess, when I feel the most beautiful, if that's, if that's the word. Yeah, it is about the pants. <laughs> can you talk about, um, can you respond to the quote, in your body's a good place to be? I think inside, inside, literally inside, in my body, there's like a, there's a well. I like to be able to scoop that out. So being presently in this body is to take and give and hopefully that's all light you know it feels like it's goodness it does so i think if that well exists in here then that must mean that it's good to be inside this body to be in this body um that's beautiful yeah that's I, I think that's that's it well said. how do you feel now I feel so simultaneously like really excited about our conversation and quite self-conscious going back and sitting, no. sitting here and Let it go. but I feel I feel good. I also feel like I can just like bah! like dance but <laughs> and, um